والذين هم لأماناتهم وعهدهم راعون والذين هم على صلواتهم يحافظون أولئك هم الوارثون الذين يرثون الفردوس هم فيها خالدون اللهم اجعلنا من الوارثين فرشح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحد العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم ثبتنا عند الموت بلا إله إلا الله اللهم اجعلنا من الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر اللهم اجعلنا من المفلحين يا رب العالمين I'm sure that you probably heard a reminder about the ayat that start off the beautiful Surah Al-Mu'minun, the 23rd Surah of the Qur'an, very famous words, قَدَ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ What I wanted to use this rare opportunity that I have, and I personally feel that I'm very honored to be here, Alhamdulillah, I flew here from Dallas this morning, and haven't even seen the hotel yet, because the cab driver couldn't find it, but Alhamdulillah. <laughs> At least he found the masjid, so I'm happy about that. But I, I feel very honored that I have this opportunity to speak to you, and, and actually the first sentiment I want to share with you before I share a reminder from these ayat is that I don't feel like a stranger. When you walk into the house of Allah, this is a bond that Allah has created between Muslims. <coughs> Once they share, La ilaha illallah, that bond is thicker than blood. So you feel home. And once you enter the house of Allah, you see other Muslims, you say salam, and you, they say salam back. You smile in their face and they smile back. They, you fulfill that sunnah of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and they fulfill their part. You know, at that point, there's a tranquility in our hearts. And there's a unity that doesn't have to be talked about or you don't have to give speeches about it, you just feel it in your heart. And may Allah azza wa jal put that genuine kind of sincere unity in all of our hearts and remove ghil, remove ill feeling, remove harshness, remove jealousy and anger and frustration and judgments between each other. May Allah remove those from us and really make us a true brotherhood. Allah Azza wa says in the surah, very beginning, Qad aflah al mu'minun. Those of you who know are familiar with Arabic, you know Qad is a dat of that's used to emphasize something, but it's also used to say or communicate the meanings of already. So whatever is about to be said is already the case. It's not like it's going to be the case, it's already the case. Then Allah uses a verb in particular for success, aflaha, <coughs> aflaha. And before we go further, a, a really shallow translation would suggest true believers have already attained success, or, or they have already succeeded. But a very particular flavor of success is what's mentioned in the ayah. And the word aflaha is uh, related to the Arabic term fallah, fallah, the farmer. And the farmer in Arabic, interestingly, has tons of words. There are lots of words that depict the farmer. Because farming was so very important to the Arabs, because most of their region wasn't really something you could grow anything on, so the few places you can grow something on are very, very important. And the activity that goes on there is very, very important. Incidentally, things that were really important to the ancient Arabs, they had lots of words for them. Like the sword. They had lots of words for the sword. So the farmer, or farming, they had lots of terminology surrounding this process, this agriculture, that sustained the entire region. At the end of the farming season, the, the harvest season, when the farmer is finally done with his labor, he sees that the crop, the harvest is tall, the stalks are tall, and he's going to go and, and, and cut all of his labor down. He's going to collect it, and he's going to make his yearly income. And the way we think of the, the our, our income nowadays, we have jobs, most of us. Uh, either we get paid weekly, or we get paid bi-weekly, or monthly. I don't think anyone here probably gets a year once one paycheck a year, I don't think anyone here has that situation. But that's what a farmer's situation is. He puts the work in all year, he puts the seed into the ground, he waters it, he begs for the rain, he puts he, he moves his animals around on the land, tilling the earth, and he hopes that the insects don't come and destroy his crop, or infestations don't happen, or weeds don't come in. And he has to basically be on this high, strung, stressful labor majority of the year. And finally, eventually, at the end of the year, he sees the fruits of his labor. At the end of that year, and by the way, agriculture is not just something that obviously happened in the Arab world, it's what's happening all over the world. And if you look at any agricultural society, you'll find the same thing. When they get to crop season, when they get to the season where they harvest, they all have festivals. They all celebrate. 
they'll they'll decorate their entire villages. There'll be singing going on. They're going to be why? Because that's not one paycheck in the entire year. All that year's labor in that one day, in that one week. That's the word aflaha from Allah. It's not just success. It's success that comes after you put in a lot of labor. It didn't just come. It didn't just make its way to you. It's something you had to put a lot of work into, endless work into. And by the way, when the farmer does put the seed in the ground and, and gets his animals to go in the hot sun and go and give water all around, he sees no progress at all. He does not know if this is going to be a good year or a bad year. There's no clue. Whether he sees results or not, he has to get up and he has to do his work. And he knows even if he skips one day, one week, if he misses up, messes up even a little bit, then it can hurt his entire labor. So he has to very strictly follow a schedule. He has to stick to a program. Allah Azza wa Jal began this surah saying, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Those who truly believe, those who really have attained a maturity in their faith, these are the people that have already attained success, implying that they've already put a lot of work in to get there. And that is why they don't just get the term الَّذِينَ amanu describing them. الَّذِينَ amanu, those of you who read Qur'an, all of you inshaAllah, know الَّذِينَ amanu comes all the time in the Qur'an. Allah uses here not, لَمْ يَقُلْ قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا قَالْ قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Al-Mu'minun is a noun. It's substantial. It's permanent. Allah is describing these people as mature in their faith by the word mu'minun. <coughs> when Allah uses الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا in the Qur'an, sometimes He even complains about them. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَا لَكُمْ Those of you who have iman, what's wrong with you? <laughs> what's wrong with you? لِمَا تَقُولُونَ مَا لَا تَفْعَلُونَ بَعْدَ قَوْلِهِ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لِمَا تَقُولُونَ مَا لَا تَفْعَلُونَ Those of you who claim to have iman, why do you say things you don't do? <laughs> but here in this ayah, these are real, real believers. <coughs> and we beg Allah that He counts us among them. But so that we should have a checklist. How do, I, how do I know for myself? And how do you know for yourself whether we qualify for this ultimate success? Where do we stand? Allah gave us a checklist. And usually, you know, khutbahs are a very short opportunity. I'm keeping an eye on the clock. I have 13 minutes exactly left. And usually, most of the khatibs that try to do the job of describing these ayat, they get to khushu'a in salah, which is the first one, and then this up in the salah. Because you don't really get time to do the rest, and then it never comes around. So I want to actually go a little faster and cover some of, more of these items on the checklist. But my agenda before you isn't just to cover these items or talk about them, many of which probably or all of which you're familiar with, but more importantly to illustrate how they're all connected to each other, how they're all tied in with each other. The first thing Allah Azza wa Jal mentions is الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ Those who especially when it comes to their salat, especially when it comes, this is ikhtisas, it's earlier in Arabic, so I'm adding that in translation. These are the people, these true believers are the people that especially when it comes to their prayer, they have this quality called khushu'a, which most commonly is misunderstood as focus, like they focus in their prayer. It's not tarkiz, it's something else. Khushu'a, in the Arabic language, is when you feel a, a kind of fear that numbs your muscles, that you get overwhelmed with fear. You don't just feel it emotionally, you almost start feeling it physically. It overtakes, it rattles you to the core. That kind of fear. Let me give you an example of that kind of fear. There's a boy talking in the back of the classroom, and they know there's a very strict teacher. And this teacher said, Abdul Karim! That child just felt khushu'a. That's what he felt. That's what he felt. He felt khushu'a. This is one of the most powerful experiences a person can have. And Allah says, especially when it comes to their prayers, these people have khushu'a. Especially when it comes to their prayers. Which implies they have khushu'a outside too. Outside too, but especially in their salawat. Now the question arises, why? Why highlight this as the first characteristic? You know, a salat, describing salat, Allah Azza wa Jalla says, you know, um, إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ كَانَتْ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ كِتَابًا مَوْقُوتًا No doubt that it's the salat, essentially, the ayah is suggesting that the salat is a means by which we maintain a schedule. It keeps our, the believer's schedule isn't, I see you at 4.30, I'll see you at 2 o'clock, I'll see you at 7 o'clock, I'll see you right before Maghrib, I'll see you right after Isha, I'll see you between Dhuhr and Asr. Our clock revolves around the salat. What did I tell you about the farmer? That he has to follow a very strict schedule if he wants to be successful. 
our strict schedule is the salah. And the point of the salah is that we never lose sight of the fact that we are working hard for success, and the moment we lose sight of that, we're really not going to be able to take our work seriously. We're not going to be able to get any of the other expectations of Allah met. What's the next expectation? وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنِ اللَّهُ مُعْرِضُونَ Very interesting. Allah says, especially when it comes to lahu. Very remarkable word in the Arabic language, lahu. Lahu means useless conversation. Urdu speakers call it bagwas, bakbak. Arabs call it kalam al You know, in, in, back in America we say shoot in the breeze. Ilallah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ilallah, 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 Ilallah. That's a speech, it's an activity. That doesn't benefit you here in this world and has no benefit for you in the Akhirah either. Do you got nothing good out of the PlayStation 3 here or in the Akhirah? You got nothing good out of Angry Birds here or in the Akhirah? But it took a lot of your time. It takes a lot of your time. This is lahu. Useless activity. Useless speech. That has no benefit in the world and no benefit, benefit in the next. <coughs> when people start respecting their time, by the way, how does a Muslim respect his time? With Salat. Salat is proof that you have respect for your time. If you really had khushu'ah and salat, you'd start respecting not just the time of salat, the time between the salawat also, so you have no time to waste, so there's no lahu in your life. You cut it out. You get rid of useless things in your life. You have friends. Sometimes you know when you're listening to a khutbah or listening to a Qur'an, you listen to it for three minutes, you get sleepy. Oh man, I've been listening a long time. That, that was really long. But when you're talking to your friends about nothing at all, you can sit for hours and talk, they're like, where did the time go? Oh my God, it's 2 a.m.? Oh, say goodbye to Fajr now, right? It will happen all the time. When a believer becomes attentive or really focused and really fearful of Allah and Salah, it starts impacting how a believer spends his or her time outside of Salah. When you stop wasting your time, it's like you start, if you stop thinking about useless things, you know, the Arab says, every container only gives out what it contains. If you're only talking about useless things all the time, that means the heart is full of useless things. That's what that means. When you start, stop that stuff. It's no longer coming out of you. It means the inside is getting cleaned up. And when the inside gets cleaned up, I give my students the image, it's like, you know, you can't see yourself in a dirty <coughs> mirror. You have to wipe it clean and then you can see your own reflection. It's when you start, waste, stop wasting your time, you can really, really, and I can really, really think about who I really am. We're delusional about who we ourselves are, where we stand in front of Allah. We don't even think about it. Because we got other stuff to think about. You got, you know, young, young folks have game, video game walkthroughs to read. Right? Or they have to check their Facebook status, with, whether somebody put a thumbs up or thumb down on their comment. They have, they have other stuff to do. But when you cut that stuff out of your life, then you start thinking about, where do I stand? What have I accomplished? You start asking yourself some very hard questions. And you start realizing that you and I have some very deep flaws. We have some problems. Some things we need to work on. Maybe you never thought about it before, but once you cut out a useless part of your life, it makes you more reflective about yourself. Allah Azza wa says, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِلزَّكَاةِ فَاعِلُونَ those especially for the goal of cleansing themselves, purifying themselves. This is not just the zakat of giving zakat. Because that is وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ الزَّكَاةَ مُؤْتُونَ Different verbiage, different language. Listen, this is zakat fa'ilun. When it comes to the goal of cleansing themselves, they put themselves to work. And they, don't, they put themselves to work because they realize there's something dirty that needs to be cleaned. You know when something's really dirty, it takes a lot of work to clean it. When the, when the stain is deep, and it's been there for a long time. Those of you that wash dishes, if you don't wash your dishes for a couple of days, what happens to this thing? It gets stuck on it. You've got to put a lot of work. If you and I have personality problems like anger, greed, <coughs> jealousy, you have a problem lowering your eyes. Nobody knows. Only you know Allah knows. Nobody knows. You could be knowledgeable or not knowledgeable. It doesn't matter. You could be young man or old man. You have a problem lowering your gaze. You have that problem. And you know about it. Nobody else can tell you you have it. You have to be honest to yourself. And if you do, if you've had that problem for a long time, it takes a lot of work to get rid of it. It's not going to happen overnight. So these people, first of all, realize what's wrong with them. Ah, I get angry too easily. 
I insult my friends too much. I talk behind people's back too much. I watch way too much shamelessness. You know, I, I'm a little too friendly with, with the opposite gender in college or anywhere else. I get a little too casual too easily. I gotta watch myself. When they realize that, they put themselves to work to try to cleanse themselves. And when it comes to cleaning yourself up, there's one fitna, there's one trial that is so dangerous that no matter how hard you work at it, the temptation never goes away. You know, you can work really hard and you can get riba out of your life, backbiting out of your life. You can work really hard and go from being a very angry person to becoming a patient person. It can happen. You can evolve. It can happen. It's possible. You can work really hard and be a very lazy person. Some people say, like in America, it's very common. I'm not a morning person, they say. I'm not a morning person means I can't wake up before 11 a.m. Right? That's what that means. But some people, if you work on yourself, you can become a morning person. You can become diligent in time. But there's one problem. There's one temptation that even the Prophet ﷺ was most concerned about when it came to this ummah. And that is temptation between men and women. Shamelessness. So Allah Azza wa Jalla dedicates multiple ayat to this one problem in the ayat of Al-Mu'minun. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلِ اللَّهُ بِمُعْرِضُونَ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِلزَّكَاةِ فَاعِلُونَ Now that purification has been mentioned. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِفُرُوجِهِمْ حَافِذُونَ One ayah. إِلَّا عَلَىٰ أَزْوَاجِهِمْ أَوْ مَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ غَيْرُ مَلُومِينَ Two ayat. فَمَنْ إِبْتَغَى وَرَاءَ ذَلِكَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْعَادُونَ Three ayat, same subject. One subject. What's that one subject? Shamelessness. When it comes to their privates, they guard them. Except on their, on their, uh, on their lawful, where they can lawfully uh, you know, uh, execute their temptations. We can look upon our wife. We can have a beautiful relationship without, you know, with the spouse. That's fine. They keep themselves restricted to that and they're happy with that. You know one of the things that we learned from that? I have four minutes left. I'm keeping an eye on the clock. One of the things we learned from that is how hard we have to work on making our marriages beautiful. How many of us, you go home, not one minute goes by and argument starts. How's your day? How's your day? Why are you asking like that? Oh my God, you're so nasty. And you just go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But when you go to work, and the secretary says, how's your day? How's your day? Muhammad, you say, it was great, it was really beautiful. I'd love to talk to you about it. And you want to prolong the conversation. The wife asks you, how's your day? I'm not, I don't want to talk about it, I'm tired right now. Don't bother me right now. We have to put work in to make our marriages beautiful, to make our marriages romantic, which is a sunnah of Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because that protects us from shamelessness. That protects us from the waswasa of shaitan. That's part of our job as believers. We got to do that. We have to do it. We have to make time. And nothing will become better if you don't give it time. Your wife needs your time. Your husband needs your time. Just like your kids need your time. That will be for another khutbah, another occasion, inshallah ta'ala. But وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِفُرُوجِهِمْ حَافِلُونَ And at the end of, once Allah mentions, they can stay away from this major problem. And by the way, I say this is an easier problem to tackle and also a bigger problem for us to face than ever before. Because now shamelessness is staring at us down the street, on your mobile device, when you're checking your email, when you're watching the news. It doesn't let you go anywhere. You can't go, go groceries, you can't go to the college. You, know, you can't go anywhere, anywhere, but to be exposed to shamelessness all the time, which means it requires that much more work from you and me. Every time you look at something wrong, and you don't feel bad. You don't feel bad, it's another stain on your heart. And how many stains because until this heart gets so dirty and then you and I wonder when we make dua to Allah, how come the guy next to me is crying, I can't even cry. My heart is incapable of crying because it's so dirty and it's so stained. It's so stained that the light can't even get inside. Because we keep getting it dirtier and dirtier and dirtier. These are the ayat of cleaning ourselves up. These are the people who put themselves to work so they can feel iman again. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ This takes work. And nobody's gonna do that work for you and me. I have to do it for myself and you have to do it for yourself. Wallahi, talking about this stuff is easy. Talking about it is easy. Doing something about it is serious. But I remind myself of a famous piece of poetry in Arabic. I love this piece of poetry. <coughs> Sha'ir says, وَمَن يَتَحِيَّبْ سُعُودَ الْجِبَالِ يَعِشْ أَبَدَ الدَّهْرِ بَيْنَ الْحُفَى Whoever feared climbing the mountain will remain forever in the ditch. 
You and I, if you think, I can't change, it's way too much change for me. Don't, know, don't be afraid, at least start. A thousand miles, start with a step. Get started, do something at least. Put a little bit of work in, and then you see how Allah makes changes in your life. How Allah opens doors in your life. Some of you try, make, try to make it to Fajr at the masjid sometimes. The few times you do make it, you know how much, how much more beautiful your day goes. Just because you made it. Some of you try to make, you know, you're not regular in your salawat. The, the few days that you do make salat on time, properly, you know the kind of light, and joy, and peace, and tranquility, and happiness you feel in those days. It's a gift from Allah. And you can accomplish it, you can, you can get there. This is the last bit I want to share with you in my final minute. After mentioning this big temptation and how we have to ward ourselves away from it, Allah Azza wa mentions two more things before He tells us these are the people that inherit the, high, inherit the highest paradise. And may Allah make all of us from them. Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِأَمَانَاتِهِمْ وَعَهْدِهِمْ رَاعُونَ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَىٰ صَلَوَاتِهِمْ يُحَافِمُونَ Two things. When it comes to the things they're trusted with and the promises that they make, they don't just fulfill them, not just mufun, ra'un. They watch over them. You know security guard watches over something? He's keeping an eye on it. I gave my word. I'm not just going to fulfill, I'm keeping an eye on my word. I'm going to watch over it. I've been trusted with something at my job. I've been trusted with something with my parents. I've been trusted with something in my deen, I'm going to watch over it. And by the way, the way to remember that you and I have to be people that fulfill promises across the board, whether it's between Muslims and non-Muslims, whether it's in our family, whether it's with co-workers or business partners, every few hours we are reminded that we're supposed to be people that fulfill promises because the next ayah takes us immediately back to the promise between us and Allah. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَىٰ صَلَوَاتِهِمْ يُحَافِلُونَ The one who's watching something is also guarding something. That's why they're watching it. That's why you keep your eye on it. I go home, my, my, my two-year-old boy, he loves playing with my phone. So I put it on the table, but I keep my eye on the phone. Or on him. And it's not just because I like looking at my phone, I'm guarding my phone. So one eye says watching, the other says guarding. Guarding what? The salawat. In other words, and this is my last comment, if you and I really understood what Salat is, Salat is supposed to make you and me reliable Muslims. It's supposed to make you and me people that keep their word, people that can be trusted. And if you're making Salat, but you can't be trusted, you don't keep your word, you can't be relied upon, then there's something wrong with your Salat, something's missing. Maybe you're missing the point, the fruit that comes out of this Salat that's supposed to be there. The, the, the benefit, the character change that it's supposed to bring into the life of a Muslim. May Allah Azza wa help us fulfill these, these, these obligations and these expectations. May Allah Azza wa make these difficulties ahead of us in cleansing ourselves easier for all of us. May Allah Azza wa bring the love of the Qur'an and the love of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam into our hearts and into the hearts of our families. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim wa nafa'ni wa iyaakum al ayati wa dhikr الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين يقول الله عز وجل في كتابه الكريم بعد أن أقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد عباد الله رحمكم الله اتقوا الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقم الصلاة إن الصلاة كانت على المؤمنين كتابا مضبوطا